Fight directors have done an extraordinary job. Action. You want to do something that's never been done before, so you want to make it original. The preparation on this film has been immense because it's a certain fighting style they invented for the film. Put your weight on your right, right? And then when you do the left hand, almost lunge out a little bit. What you're seeing is kind of a blend of three or four martial arts put together. So some people might look at it and go, oh, that's Kung Fu, oh, that's Silat. Oh, that's Filipino martial arts. We're trying to make it something unique to the movie. Give yourself a round of applause. I run a martial arts school, so we're all teachers. So we can break it down into small movements, so they understand the beats and the timing, and then gradually we've been putting all the moves together. We know the position, we know how to turn. We're going to make sure again, knees, bomb, off the floor. We have Julian, our dance choreographer for the movie, because in the movie, it's a mystical martial arts academy. Julian's gonna bring some type of hand formations that create these lines of light. I've been dancing for 10 years now and I have a black belt in karate. So I think putting those two together made me uniquely qualified for making the gestures for the magic moments in the movie. I do hip hop and I do popping and tutting. And tutting is only arms and hands. And then it also breaks down even smaller yeah, to finger tutting, which finger. you're doing boxes and shapes with just your fingers. And then it can get really funky where you're just kind of like doing alien fingers. Jojo is doing the fight scenes. I make the gestures to materialize these weapons and powers and he gets to fit those things into the actual fight scenes. Go! Look at that. That looks good. Three, two, one, action! Sometimes I'm going to get you right. So that reason. Benedict was shooting constantly and doing theater in the evening, so he squeezed the training in between. Benedict threw himself into this role, and he went through months of physical training even while he was on stage doing Hamlet to learn how to fight and how to move. We've had to say, Benedict, maybe we should let the stuntman do that particular stunt. He has been game for everything. You have to be incredibly fit. I mean, I started working out for this film, not just to fill the suit, so to speak, but also just to be able to take knocks, to be able to do multiple takes of fight scenes over five days. Fight! Fight! If your life depended on it! I've been whipped about three times with this sort of whip thing that Chiwetel and I had to play with in a fight training scene. Yeah, it's a great moment in the film in terms of the relationship of, of Mordo and Strange, where he's introducing him to all of the different fighting methods that they can use. Doctor Strange is also sort of fighting back and so finding his own feet and sense of himself in this world. They're still master and pupil. Trust your teacher. But it's the first time that there is a sort of equivalency about them. There's a kind of dance to it. For me, there was this issue with the Ancient One, that the Ancient One is a complete mofo at doing all this stuff, but is super, super still and super serene while doing it. So that was quite a task. Because generally speaking, when you're slicing people to bits, you kind of want to show it in your face. The style of the martial arts is very kung fu because they're like Shaolin monks, these, these characters. Although my character is described as a zealot, so he's a bit more bullish in the way he fights. A bit less graceful. I've been hit in the face, I've been kicked in the stomach quite hard, I've been punched twice, I've tripped over the cape. That's not so super heroic, but very funny. Three, two, one, go. And then there's also a lot of wire work in the film. 
And it becomes <laughs> very exciting and just a lot of fun, really. Stephen Broussard and Kevin Feige said, I've done more wire work on this than any other film that they've worked on. I get flung through a wall or suspended by a wire over a drop and then smashed into an asteroid in another dimension, flung off the edge of a building that's changing shape or knocked over a balcony or smashed through a cabinet. <laughs> You can't really say you're a superhero unless you've actually experienced some of the physical trauma. It was really fun. It's not every day you get to smash glass and be paid for it. Yeah, it's all good fun and games, isn't it? With Doctor Strange, we're crafting some really cool and unique visual ideas and really mind-trippy, out-there sort of sequences that I think approach action in really cool new ways. We're dealing with other dimensions. We're dealing with other possible realities. We're dealing with magic. There's a lot of real-world live action in this film, but there's also the most extraordinary effects, and the importance of the environments and the action in those environments has never been richer, so I think it's a great cinematic ride. In terms of visual effects, there's things that haven't been seen before. The visuals are remarkable. We wanted to expand people's minds. Open your eye. The film is not really so much about destruction. It's about creation. It's about bending things. It's not about breaking things. My creativity on this film was pretty open. There was no, oh no, let's not even try it. It was like, let's try everything. As soon as I saw the plans for what the visuals were gonna be, I thought it was quite literally a different universe. <laughs> There are more interesting things that can be done with modern film technology. I think we can do more, you know, and that's that's part of the ambition of Doctor Strange. The comics themselves are incredibly visually rich, and that immediately translates into a 21st century cinematic landscape because we have these extraordinary tools at our disposal. In the comics, Steve Ditko is famous for his interpretation of this dark dimension. And what the entire production team has been tasked with doing is bringing that to life. We try to be faithful to it, but bring something new to it, you know, kind of put it into our world. And nowadays, you know, we're in 21st century, so it's a different technology. But we try to be very faithful to these ideas. I've got a selection of environments in 3D here, which I can modify and adjust the speed of and the color and then an array of 3D cameras looking at them, each of which drives one of these outputs, which goes to the individual lighting panels, which light Benedict. Three, two, one, action. And now! Marvel are always experimental as filmmakers. They're always taking technology right to the edge and beyond the edge, and they're inventing every day new technology to do things that a year ago they wouldn't have been able to do. I see through you. One of the staples of Doctor Strange's magical powers is the ability to astral project, which was another idea born of groovy 60s thinking, you know, I'll meet you on the astral plane, man. <gasps> what did you just do to me? I pushed your astral form out of your physical form. What's in that tea? Psilocybin, LSD? It's just tea. With a little honey. You're exiting your body and you're viewing something from an alternate dimension. So that's a big moment for us to figure out how we're gonna do that. It'll start off often at Marvel in the Viz Dev department, and they'll come up with concepts. Previs is essentially moving storyboards. You actually can now get into what the shots are supposed to be like, how dynamic the moves are. That then gets handed off to a facility who will then begin testing that with moving footage. Action! Now! We're testing today the astral push moments, and in those moments, we're shifting into a high speed. So we're testing frame rates as well as camera speeds in order to do that.
The Astroform is one of the simplest effects that we've done and one of the hardest because you need to believe that in a way is the spirit that sort of comes out of the body. We all know what the body looks like and we also know what a ghost looks like. And the idea was that we didn't want it to look like a ghost and yet is ghostly. The main thing was in the way they can move and interact with the environment. When they fly very fast through the room, they can go through the walls, but then cling to the walls. Things are moving when they hit them. So that's not really ghosts uh, as we know them. By far, my favorite scene in the movie is with the Ancient One and Doctor Strange in the balcony of the hospital, where she's watching that moment of lightning. Look at me, stretching one moment out into a thousand just so that I can watch the snow. We wanted the light to change in the room when this moment happens so that you could feel that you're in a different dimension, but you want it to stay connected. It's such a delicate balance. Amamu dwells in the dark dimension beyond time. Doctor Strange really did introduce a whole other aspect of the Marvel comic universe, which was the aspect of other dimensions. And it's fascinating because since that time, you know, dimensional theory has advanced so much. The notion that there are surrounding dimensions that we don't have the ability to perceive. And we all like the idea of taking the science of that very seriously and using that as a way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The dark dimension, Dormammu is coming setting up the stakes of believability that these dimensions exist and that they're dangerous, I think requires a certain seriousness as you approach it. That doesn't mean the movie's not fun, it just means the world is real, these people are dangerous. We have a fight in the streets of Hong Kong where we have to create a feeling that time is either stopping, slicing, or reverting. There was a lot of work put into this. The way we shot the sequences was pretty complex. We have time going forward and backward and buildings coming up and down. So we have to go and look at the previous where we can actually understand exactly where we are at that moment. The two departments, visual effects and the art department, they're coming together more and more these days. Now, there's a lot of visual effects, obviously, in all of this, but you'd be surprised how much we do in camera as well. Let's roll. Rolling. It's a very collaborative process. Action. I was really interested in making a movie where the visual effects were always used to do something new and were used to create scenes that were unexpected and not quite like anything we've seen before. I'm such a kind of techno geek when it comes to filmmaking technology and the visual effects team on this are out there they're from another planet. The magic people behind the screen make this look like something we've never seen before. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. It's going to be a stunning visual effects fest.